on Tuesday, September 13th, 2020 at 6 p.m. The time is now 6.02. Uh, would you please call the roll? All the person, Kastner? Present. Steve Rod. Steve, Steve Rogers? Present. Present. Brian Weiss is excused. Don Carlson? Present. We would like to welcome our new plan commissioner, Zach Marshall. This is probably the only applause. Zach is a member from the Park and Rec Park Board, and who the chair gets appointed to sit on the planning commission to make sure that everything we do here, the people at the Park and Rec Board know about. Okay. He's also a great dentist with offices in Watertown. Water Waterford. Waterford, sorry. <laughs> so Zach Marshall, great dentist. Soon to be great. Planning Commission. Former Marine. Yeah. Former Marine, too. Former Marine. I didn't know. Planning Zach, I didn't know you were in the Marines. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps. Mike, but you were Planning the Commissioner. Oh, no. That's not Former right. Marine. Yeah, that's Dennis. not even the same, is it? That's yeah. the way it'll forever read get on locked? your resume. No, my resume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mr. Krenz. Bob Krenz. <laughs> Mike Braswell. Present. And I'll mark Danielle as excused. Okay, so Mr. Weiss isn't here this evening, which means that Mr. Braswell can vote until, as an alternate, can vote until Mr. Weiss appears, if he does. Agreed. Um, item two, entertain a motion to approve the August 9th, 2022 minutes. Motion by Mr. Braswell, is there a second? I'll no, second that. Second by Ms. Um, Commissioner Rogers, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll abstain. I was, uh working at the elections that night zach taylor or zach marshall zach taylor zach taylor that was like from zach, duran duran zach right? is that duran duran <laughs> isn't it zach morris zach morris is it sorry is that great name? saved by the bell is that a show or something yeah okay. yeah i'm too old for too that. old for that right? <clears throat> and uh, mr carlson abstain on passes unanimously with those two abstentions. Item 4A, special use permit for Cree. We're one Cape. number three. Discussion. Discussion regarding last common council meeting. Sorry, apologize. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Anytime. There were two public hearings. Uh, Dank House was uh, approved. That was going into the Grandpa Frank's uh, multi-tenant commercial building and Ogden's multi-family rezoning request at River Falls Family Fund Center was uh, denied. So those are two public hearings that evening. Great. In Thank August. You. Thank you. And a 4A and 4B are, are sort of together. It's a special use permit for K-Pot Korean Barbecue and Hot Pot, a proposed restaurant to be located at 4902 South 74th Street. This is also the site plan review for the basically the site. Um, this is where the old, uh, old country buffet was. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so we, Old Country Buffet has been vacant for over 12 months, so we're starting from scratch, brand new special use permit, public hearing required. Um, this site is zoned PUD, which permits full service restaurants. Korean barbecue will offer various meats, seafood, vegetable, hot pot options. They also will be applying for a liquor license, which will concurrently be on the Common Council agenda, um, scheduled for October 18th. Their proposed hours of operation are noon to 10, Sunday through Thursday, noon to 11, Friday through Saturday. Uh, the applicant does have 10 plus years of restaurant experience. Uh, they're not proposing any exterior alterations, just remodeling the inside. Site is in great condition. Um, there are, there's ample parking with 1,111 spaces on the entire site. And then staff recommends to hold a public hearing October 18th. Make a motion to approve the item as presented and authorize the public hearing. I'll Dave. second. I have one question. Where do you have your 10 years oh. experience? I take it that's you. Sorry. Yes. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me today and I appreciate your time. Where do you get the 10 years experience at? Um, I have been working in the restaurant industry for over 12 years. Um, Recently, I'm owning a restaurant in uh, Waukesha. We opened that for almost uh, 11 years. Mm. This is a huge place. Yes, it's a very huge place, and we're looking forward to uh, having that turn to Korean barbecue. Yeah, okay. Yep. And I assume you'll have kimchi. <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. All you can eat. <laughs> yep. What's the name of the restaurant in Waukesha? I'm sorry? What's the name of the restaurant in Waukesha? Uh, Meiji Cuisine. Yep. You probably heard about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, motion was made, seconded. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. It's step one. Yep. So the public hearing is the next 
it does it does it require a public hearing yeah. because it's because it's yeah okay. even though the PUD specified that there could be a restaurant there yeah, it's, that's just the, the okay all right and uh, five a and five b is special use permit for Mr. Carwash to be located thank you so much for, for your time oh, sure. Thank you. sure thank you um, proposed business to be located 4763 South 27th Street as well as the site landscape and architectural plans. This is the site of the old Sonic restaurant. I see them here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the applicant is proposing to demolish the Sonic Drive-In restaurant on 27th Street and construct from scratch Mr. Car Wash. The site is zone C2, which permits car washes as a special use. The proposed hours of operation are 7 to 7, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 6 on Sunday. The estimated project cost is $4 million. Uh, so this is the proposed site plan. It's a 5,600 square foot conveyor type standalone express car wash building, free vacuum stalls, which are on the west end of the building. Um, so you have 27th Street here along the east. You've got the entrance from a private drive, which actually is owned by festival. So there are easements, um, easement agreements between the two parties. Enter the site. There should be plenty of queuing space here. You can see they have three drive through lanes. The vehicles will wrap around, enter the building, head south through the building, exit. They could exit the site onto that private drive again, or they could continue north and go to the vacuums. Um, there are large retain, going to be large retaining walls along 20, 27th Street um, and along the northern drive-through lane, and extensive landscaping along the perimeter and base along the base of the building. So the architecture design of the building has a variety of materials. There's a stone veneer along the entire base of the building and CMU infill, um, which are the kind of grayish painted colors here. Standing seam and Aluma boards metal paneling are the brown colors, and the standing seam is the dark blue, and a little bit of EFIS capping here. And you can see that they have awnings, uh, metal awnings throughout the um, exterior, and then, of course, the drive-through the drive -through, um, door here. And then this facade is proposed EFIS. I'll get into that in a second, but pretty similar um, with the two long sides of the building. Um, staff is recommending just a few modifications to the, arc, to the design and the materials being used. The facade along the west side, they are using CMU blocks. So staff would like it to be consistent and higher quality materials. If you may recall the car wash, the tsunami car wash next to Meyer is 100% brick. Um, there's no EFAS, so we are asking um, that they just fill this one side with CMU block to match and mirror the other side of the building. And then the few locations that have a metal, metal at the base, we're asking that that be stone veneer at all bases. Um, one thing that was pointed out in the staff report, and I. Andrew had spoken with the applicant, I believe, this morning, and I think that the applicant is able to um, give, provide a better explanation here. But this is the Mr. Car Wash on Layton Avenue on the south side, Walmart. Super Walmart is on the north side, so just east of Highway 100. And you can see from the aerial photo just on Google that there's an extreme amount of black staining that is being carried out into Layton Avenue. And we asked the applicant for an explanation, and I do believe that that explanation can be provided this evening. Uh, so with this being a special use permit, we are recommending to hold a public hearing on October 18th. Did they give you any more description in the retaining walls that are gonna be so obvious and apparent as opposed to just cinder blocks? I do believe there's CMU block. That's just pretty. If the plan commission wishes for higher quality material. You may I ask for it. I think it <laughs> should be because that is as prominent so, as whatever else we're talking about here. I mean, literally, you'll see that before you see the building. All right, I don't know about the about the material, but you were saying something about changing that side there. Are you going to make it all one color, or is it going to be a two tone? Because a two tone looks nice. I don't know that. It would be two tone. So this is the west elevation here. Uh -huh. And this is the east. So the tones would stay the same. It's for some reason, the east, they're proposing EFAS. Okay, you're, okay, you're not changing the color. You're just not liking right. the material on that other side. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. And I'm sorry, if I have my east and west 
mixed up. These are not labeled as east and west, so it, either way, we're asking for them to be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Carl, what were you saying? There's retaining walls along the street oh. that are pretty predominant. At least they're putting in a uh, tiered, so you can have landscaping between them. But the, and then there's going to be a guardrail that you'll probably see. I think what we did at Walmart is we had the retaining wall go up higher above the uh, the guardrail, so you didn't see that from the street. I would probably think that would be appropriate here, because you're going to see this huge metal railing. Sure. It's going to sure. be hideous. Mm -hmm. okay. It's going to be some industrial-like building. Is that an entryway in the top left? Uh, uh, it is not. There? No, okay. right here. No. Nope. Down a little bit further. Oh, sorry. Here. <laughs> There's only two entries okay. um, on the south, which is a private drive from a festival, um, and that right here is the 27th Street yeah. entry exit. Is there feedback from the applicant? Or? Are the applicants here? Are they going to explain the black? I'm guessing brake cylinders. If you could brake state pads? your state your name. Yeah. No, it's, if you could state your name and who you're with, please. So, yeah. I mean, just as I understood this black stuff on the road, um, we've had a couple of public hearings where people have showed up that live along the street, and when it rains, this stuff gets extremely slippery. So I'm guessing it's residue from, you know. The car wash, right? Soaps and waxes and stuff. That are yeah, so um, I'm Victor Yee, regional manager for uh, the Milwaukee area. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to um, speak this evening and for this, for this uh, potential to expand the Mr. Car Wash footprint to serve the community. Uh, the the staining you're, we're seeing uh, in this photograph is uh, identified as our tire shine uh, chemical. It's a tire sealant that helps shine up the the tires on, on our vehicles as, as, as they exit the tunnel. Um, with this location and actually all um, of our locations in, in the area at the moment, they're acquisition based. So the layout and footprint are kind of older styles. Um, and with this uh, proposed location, actually it would be a new style that we would move the uh, tire shine applicators further down the line of the tunnel, uh, actually in a drier area so that um, the, the chemical is not being applied to the tire in a more wet environment, which, which basically uh, encourages to run off um, you know, more quickly. Um, the, the tire shine will be applied in a you know, much more uh, high quality fashion so that sticks to the tire and, and minimizes the um, uh, opportunity to, to, to run off as we see uh, in, in this photo here. Um, Just quickly, I mean, you can't have that stuff doing that to the street. So yes. we need, I don't know, you probably need to go talk to somebody about that. Yeah, so uh, I believe we have uh, additional drainage at the exits of the um, exits of the tunnel and, and the properties as well that will uh, uh, go back towards our, our, our trench, yeah. right? Yeah, I can speak, I can speak to the drainage. I'm uh, Eric Lokenskar with Kimley, Kimley Horn, uh, consulting engineer here. Um, so what's different from what you're seeing in this picture versus uh, what, we would, what we're proposing as part of this uh, new build, we call it, um, is the grades out of the tunnel are actually fashioned in such a way that the the water and everything that runs off is captured on site. Um, so here, what's happening is, you know, the tires are wet as they're leaving the tunnel, and they still have the residue on it. That residue's sticking to the to the pavement as it exits out onto the right of way. Um, another thing that, um, you know. The exit from the proposed car wash isn't directly onto the right of way in this scenario. It is through the um, the, the furniture store before it gets to the right of way and before it gets to the concrete of the street. So that um, certainly helps in that that aspect as well. Just to um, clarify one thing, uh, Commissioner Rogers asked about uh, access in the northwest corner. There is a proposed okay. curb cut there um, that exists today, um, and and that would. That would mainly serve um, the the trash pickup and trash operations for the car wash. You can see the um, trash enclosure up there. Yeah, um, it's just right here. Okay. Yep, and right. yep. So that 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 is what that uh, sorry that is what that um, that access would be mainly used for. It would be that that trash pickup. It's, it it wouldn't be wouldn't make sense for somebody to go all the way up there just to go back in to the to the queue. So I could. Um, 
Are you able to address the retaining wall and the oh, yeah. railings? Yeah, sorry. Um, so the retaining walls are, yeah, they're, they're large in the fact that they're long and they cover a lot of the site. I don't know if you've driven by the site recently, um, but there is quite a bit of grade um, from the, between the road elevation and the, uh, um, the, the, the current Sonic building. So um, basically what we propose there is um, two, two retaining walls tiered, uh, as, you, as you can see there with landscaping in between to supplement. Um, they would be between three and six feet in height. Um, the, the majority of the eastern side of the site closest to the street, they would be two three foot retaining walls. And then up in the corner where it kind of wraps around um, and, and heads towards the west would be uh, six, six foot at the corner and then it would slowly taper off on the north side. So there you can see um, the pretty significant grade. Um, and so we would basically cut into that hill and then make it uh, a retaining wall. What are you gonna do with the guardrail? So um, we certainly can, can extend the retaining wall up uh, above the, the height of the guardrail such that it, it, can be, it can be screened. We can also use landscaping and whatnot um, to screen it. Do you have that by the planning or the council meeting to staff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can work with city staff and, and have a, a solution by then for sure. Then show me. So do you work with Mr. Carwash at the location on Layton and Highway 100? Yeah, yeah, so um, I'm familiar with that location. Uh, we have a, a, two regional managers. That isn't the location I oversee. Um, however, um, you know, with, with, if there are any concerns. Um, if there have, I mean, I, yeah. I think our co-enforcer has gone out there and expressed concerns. And okay. I think our engineering staff is as well. While Layton Avenue is a county highway, it is creating a safety issue. When it rains, the, the black stuff that goes on the tires gets extremely slick and you slide around. So we, that stuff, can't, it has to stay on the site. It can't go on the roadway. See, I'm puzzled. They actually did move those, and I don't think it helped. I don't know what they, they did. They, yeah, they moved them. I, well, I go there. Um, and I do like the tire shine, but they moved them back. Which it's amazing car wash. I'm not suggesting it's not. It just it. can't have its... Yeah. And have waxes and soaps and yeah. The, uh, on terms of the road, <laughs> the, the the maintenance of, of of the of the equipment and the site, you know, it's all an ongoing opportunity for us to continue to evaluate. So, um, if, if there are concerns, then I, I'll bring it up to my counterpart, and we can absolutely uh, address those issues. Is there actually an issue with the product, maybe itself? I mean, obviously, you got it's got to stick to the tire, but it's not either sticking well or. Because I think no matter what, yeah. right? Even I think it's. You're still going to get some residual that's going to come off the tires as somebody drives away. We're sure, sure. With, with most of our mitigate that, I don't think. With most of our locations, we do like a, like a quarterly uh, pressure wash to keep everything nice and clean, um, depending on you know the the seasonality and, and what what we can or can't do. Um, with the chemistry applications, uh, we we uh, continue to evaluate and make adjustments on a um, we're supposed to on a daily basis. So um, you know that's an opportunity for us to investigate for sure. Because I suspect the county is going to say that you have to remove that stuff from the roadway when it appears. No, I understood. Yeah, I was right. going to say, who's cleaning the street? I mean, get Mr. Steam Cleaner out there and clean that off, right? Um, so, I don't, yeah, so. It's important. It's a county highway, so they're the ones that keep the, they are broke, so they don't clean things as much as they should. Um, but they will certainly require that you do it. I would suspect at the 27th Street location as well that Festival Foods is not going to appreciate or Ashley's not going to appreciate the stuff all over the roadway right. with the cross easement. So you need no, to keep that absolutely on the yes. site. Right? And I think with Alderperson Kastner's recommendation with regard to the retaining wall and all that, there probably needs to be an elevation from the street level showing an actual drawing of what that's going to look like. Right? I, thank so you. Yeah, happy. I agree. Yeah. As long as I'm happy, right? Uh, it's so, important to me that you're happy. So does that does his idea about building that retaining wall to, to hide the uh, guardrail does that interfere with any of your street uh, signage or advertising? Uh, no, actually, the because the retaining wall, so the the building would sit higher than the street, right? So um, if the if the guardrail is 
24 inches, 27 inches, whatever the whatever the the standard height of the guardrail is, that shouldn't interfere. That shouldn't interfere with the signage of of passersby's being okay. able to see the. Where's the, the sign going to be? Would you, would you guys propose a sign to be? Because yeah, so so the elevations are pretty standard, um, and and signage is currently proposed on all four sides. We understand that that is not um, what is going to be built. Um, there there likely won't be signs on the on the the west side of the building or the north side of the building, um, probably on the on the east on the east side of the building as the as the um, Passerby's on the street. Um, it's the east and the south side. That east and the south side, yeah. There's not going to be a monument sign or any? Uh, there's not a monument sign proposed, no. They Was can't there a monument sign for the south? Can it go on festival? Well, festivals, you can't see festivals either, so. Yeah, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, you're not going to miss the building. Sonic, you wasn't there a sonic it? monument sign? I thought there was, but. Yeah. Because is so that going to go away? Use that? That? Yeah. No, there's no sign. There's not one. Okay. Why did they leave? That might be why they're not there anymore. <laughs> there was a sign. There was a sign, over. I thought. It fell over? Yeah. No. Was it fell sign, over? Yeah. Maybe. It was a <laughs> sonic sign, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. It yeah. could be in the bushes right there. Oh. There used to be one. Yeah. Okay. Is that a frame? That you couldn't yeah. see. That's yeah, right there in that frame. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I knew there was one. That's yep. right in our driveway. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so that would be that would interfere with the where the drive of the car wash and the retaining walls anyway, and whatnot yeah. would go. And then just as far as the building materials, it sounds like um, the drive it or whatever you call it, the EFIS? It's got EFIS, sorry, yeah. also known as drive it at one point, wasn't it? Oh, okay. you dating yourself? Yeah, EFIS <laughs> is probably a bad thing, especially on a car wash anyway. Hmm. Um, yep, we yeah we've been working with. Okay. Andrew and, and so you don't have any objections to the the choice of materials that have been suggested? No, no, we can make that work. Okay, very good. Okay, anything else for anybody? No, I make a motion to approve as we are modifying it. It's discussed. I'll second. Discussed. Uh, second by uh, Carl Rogers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. Motion carries. I'm having a mind snuggy tonight. Is that for both A and B? Or? It is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Item 6A and 6B, special use review for Stalis Palace, an existing business located at 3800 South 108th Street, submitted by Rachel Lynn Daniels, doing business as Stalis Palace, and Natalie Placky, doing business as Route 100 Twins, Inc. This is also a site plan review for that same location. They're here this evening. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is uh, when there is a change of ownership or tenant um, for, special, for existing special use uses. Um, we go through a special use review process and so the applicant is proposing to occupy and operate, not not own, but um, operate the existing tavern on the southeast corner of Highway 100 and Beloit Road. They own an existing uh, tavern in West Dallas called Stales Palace and they um, are would like to continue that name for this particular location. Site is zone C2. Hours of operation will be 3 to 2, Monday through Thursday, 11 to 2.30 on the weekend, Friday and Saturday, and 11 to 2 on Sunday. The applicant does have nine years of experience at their current location in West Dallas. Um, so just visiting the site, there are a few improvements that staff is recommending. Uh, we've got rope lighting in the trees that's not permitted per our sign code. We've got um, car bumpers that have been pushed into the grass over time from snow plows, section of fence missing, and then just, you know, some potholes that need basic maintenance and filling throughout the parking lot. So staff is recommending that by the end of November, those improvements be taken care of and uh, recommends to expedite this particular application to the September 20th Common Council meeting. Um, I also just would just like to add that um, the police department has had um, a significant amount of calls to this operation. We did do a police report from West Dallas for the proposed owner's existing business and seems to be run very well. No issues with the West Dallas Police Department. So. Yeah, I mean, just so you're clear, there were some things that were happening before it was the Route 100. Um, it had we could probably say gunfire. Yeah, there was gunfire, and there were there were shots in the building and in the parking lot. Um, uh, the, I, the 
lights that shine so in the there, there you know without getting into what was discussed in closed session upon review of the the license at issue um it's it's really really expected that you run a good tight ship and the folks that you're leasing it from i'm sure have probably discussed some of that with you i would hope that they have he was a bouncer i think at one time there too can you come up to the microphone i'm sorry if you just have a couple comments so so is the other Stalos Palace going to stay open? Are you going to have two locations then? Are you? If moving? you could state your name in the microphone too, please. Yeah, I'm Tom Daniels. Uh, this is my wife, Rachel. We ran the Palace, Stalos Palace pretty much together the last nine years. Um, kind of the factor that I'm running into is I was kind of looking at a sale lease of the other place. That's, gonna, that's not going to happen before November. Okay. So we're honestly going to change, we're going to, change the name it's going to stay stalus palace the one in west Dallas. we are going to keep that and we're going to ch name this something different we're kind of running into a jam with so that. i think everyone up here was really hoping it was going to be stalus palace <laughs> yeah. in greenfield so. yeah i mean the one thing we liked about it was i mean it is you know our name people know that it was our bar that's why we were considering it but we're that's not going to happen now so whatever the it, I don't think most of us really care what the name is. Yeah. Okay. It's, I just the, wanted the to biggest go over concern it. is that you know yeah, the, I, the terms of the special use are that there can't be gunfire in the parking oh, lot or in the building and I mean I used and the I clientele work, needs to be measured and um, right. And, yeah. I mean that's what I used to do there. I pretty much worked from the bottom to up to the top. I then went and opened my own place or we did together. I used to work for Scotty. Mm -hmm. That's who I worked for for the nine years. Uh, obviously Rob's. Placky has taught me a ton of the stuff. I've, you know, referred that to my wife, and we run a pretty tight ship. Okay, I've that's heard that. That's what we're really most concerned about. Yeah, I whatever mean, you I'm, name it, you know. I mean, honestly, I, there's too much money involved for me not to be there 60 hours. Okay, very good. Um, with regard to the special use conditions that they're talking about, with regard to the fence, the fence is yeah, probably a, um, a critical one. Sorry, Parking Rob, lot, they're out of, of town just till uh, next week, and then me and Rob are going to button all that stuff up. Okay. Um, one thing that be very cognizant of at that site is the condominium complex to the south, right? Okay. And the parking, um, there's a dentist office to the east that I think folks park in. Yeah, we'll okay. go back. Um, you need to keep, you know, pretty good control over all of that stuff, right? Yeah, the right? noise and everything. Well, it's, the, yeah. yeah. Yep. All the well, kinds I of mean, things that can happen in I've, the parking lot yep. that you're probably aware of. Keep everything in line. Right. I fully understand. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, that's how we want it to. So we're going to vote on a special use review on the site plan review for a business whose name is to be determined at this right. location. Does that sound good? Thank you. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Are you going to have cameras? I don't know if there's existing. There is cameras there, there but if I have to, I'll update them. I wanted to get, like, NVR, I mean, uh, what are the ones that track, you know, and you can turn them. I can't want to say DVR, but that's not it. PTS. Okay. Then you can, you know. They, the, they, they got a pretty good system, and now I know over by me I have the QC cameras because I've worked, had to use them a couple times with West Dallas. You know, they had guys coming past our place that are doing dumb stuff that I've worked with but so I understand all the so I want always, good cameras and security so it's always amazed me and it, it includes some of the financial institutions that are in the community they'll build fantastic buildings and they'll get robbed or something and then the quality of their video is yep. is atrocious yeah it's for the money it's money very very well spent right yeah um, yeah I mean the stuff they have nowadays good stuff okay they actually have their bartenders review their own work <laughs> in Stalus Palace. <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> Once in a while. Yeah, okay. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Elder Prison oh, Caster, second by um, Commissioner Carlson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We anxiously await the new name of New your... name and mm. <laughs> clean operation and good bowling leagues or pool, um, pool leagues. Um, I think it's important that you do talk to the owners that are leasing it to you yeah. um, about the discussion that was had. Yep. Maybe the contact. If they didn't have the, that discussion with you. The, the contact for the uh, Oakbrook condo, too. You might want to do that. Okay. And open it up to them as well as, I don't know. Uh, because when it was Wentz and when it was Scotty's, for the most part, it was. 
it lived in harmony for the most part with the neighborhood. They did. They, they actually would. Um, yeah, they had bartenders. There was a rough. There, there was a very there. rough stretch recently. Try to cooperate with that. No, I'll address it. I, we have no problem going and talking to the people over there and seeing what we can do to make things better. I mean, I know the fence is a little short. Can you put an eight-foot fence for you commercial? Can, you can. So yes, you can. Well, the, the code, she'll say, the code says it's six feet, but we would encourage eight feet. If, yeah. So if you go to her, um, we will. The, the property line's in a messed up spot, too. It's on the bottom of the hill. But yeah, to your point, I mean, eight feet probably make better sense, right? Yeah. Prefer eight feet yeah. next to residential areas yeah. and commercial areas. So. Yeah, I mean, because honestly, to the right of that, there isn't really right. much to there. There's right. just trees. Okay. We voted on Perfect. that? Perfect. Do we want to? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. We all in favor? I didn't get that. Uh -huh. wanna... I think it was all eyes, right? All eyes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Zach, you got to speak up. Aye. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Item seven. Yeah. Uh, item seven is certified survey map to divide an existing parcel located at 4400 South 92nd Street, submitted by Bill Ohm. I'm um, doing business with Cobalt Partners and Scott Yuck doing businesses, Cobalt 92 LLC and RJ 92 LLC. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so this was before the Planning Commission recently for a rezone um, for a planned unit development district. And uh, so this evening is recommending, or we're Cobalt is proposing a certified survey map to split the lots into actually a 28% and then 82% division. Um, so here's the actual certified survey map, which would create lot one and two. The reason for this is because this is an existing condition map of the Greenfield and Whitnell School District boundaries, which cut this property into a 28% and 72% <laughs> split. Um, it never was any, really on anyone's radar because it had originally been a utility corridor owned by We Energies, and it was also a vacant site. And so uh, working with Cobalt and having a lot of side conversations about wrapping the 84 South TID boundary um, to include this parcel, uh, we realize that it's actually in fact in two different school districts. And when there's voting going on with Joint Review Board Committee, uh, you can't have two, two school districts uh, voting on TID related stuff. So the certified survey map proposed would follow the school district boundary and continue and wrap only the section of Cobalt's proposal um, and would also have to include this parcel down here because you can't skip parcels in TID boundaries. So Cobalt brought this conceptual plan to the Planning Commission. It's just a really strange coincidence that their layout just happened to follow this boundary very nicely. Um, it really was a coincidence that we did not know about this boundary. Cobalt didn't when, or this even the issue when this site layout was, was proposed. So it would split the future development layout um, and leave about four, leave four buildings in the Whitnell School District. Um, now there may be an opportunity in the future that maybe the school district boundaries through a petition process could be modified and Greenfield School District could encompass this entire parcel. It's a conversation down the road. We're actually doing a lot of due diligence and background work on that topic. Um, that's something that would need to go before the State Department of Public Institution. So it's a really, and both school boards, it's a really lengthy involved process, but we're having those serious deep conversations now in the, in the background. But in the meantime, Cobalt is proposing to split the lot so that they can move forward and we can move forward with the TIF boundary amendments. And maybe you'll see this again in the future to erase that certified survey map line. Yeah, I would imagine the Whitnell uh, apartments would rent for more, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's really unclear. So the weird thing is that on because it was all right away at one point. Um, both school districts had the wrong boundaries on their websites as to what was actually within their district. So where you see the green rectangle, um, that's the greenfield part that's surrounded by yellow there. Mm -hmm. um, everyone sort of assumed that that was part of the Whitnell School District. Um, 
and everyone thought that the apartments along the freeway, I think, were part of the Whitnell School District as well. I'm not sure. Maybe not. They knew Green, were they part Greenfield. of Greenfield? Yeah. Yeah. So we had a we had to go to DPI and we got the original had to go and paperwork. Search the records from back in the 50s. From 1958. The laundries were. It was actually a farm there that um, was part of Greenfield. So. Other information we've learned over the last few months. Yes, indeed. So the process could be to try to get the entire site within the Greenfield School District. Um, the developer would have to, or the owner of the property would have to go, have to make a petition to the Whitnell and Greenfield School Districts or one or the other. I don't remember the exact statutory both. Um, and then they have to sort of agree. Um, I sus suspect one would agree, the other one may not agree. So there'll have to be maybe some horse trading with something else um, to, to bring it all together. How does that truly impact the owner? How does it truly impact the parcel owner? The, the, the parcel owner? Is really so it. to capture the increment there, to do some of the improvements with regard to the sanitary sewer that needs to go from 92nd to 99th Street um, to alleviate some of the water issues that have um, plagued that area because this, this storm sewer or the sanitary sewers are kind of screwed up. Um, that um, making some safety enhancements to 92nd Street. Um, there's this idea, we were talking about paths before the meeting, creating a path that will lead you from 92nd Street all the way to, to 99th Street, kind of following a curve along the, the lower left-hand corner. You gotta miss some wetlands, but yeah. You're gonna miss the wetlands and all that other stuff. So all those kinds of things um, can be, um, we can't pay for it necessarily with tax dollars or park fees, so we need to we need to look at TIF as a, as a possible way to get to fund those things. So um, it would be better to have everything in there, just like you said. You know, it's like, no, I want to live in Unit D, not C or something. I don't know, because of the school district. I, I can't imagine that that's the most efficient way to, to do it, especially when most of, the, most of the development is within the Greenfield district. Um, I, I would guess that Whitnell would say, well, why would we want to give away anything? And that's where we have to kind of look at maybe other parcels that may be, that may be orphaned somewhere to, to see if there's some desire to even the, the potential tax base. Yeah, how do you take somebody out of a Greenfield that wants to stay? Well, that's I, tough. I, I, well, both, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there are other parcels that we've identified that are undeveloped. Yeah, we're researching this, yeah. That um, are within the Greenfield district that could potentially be in the Whitnell district. Um, we're still looking into all of that. We haven't made contact with the owners. We don't want to do anything yet, right? But just to give you an idea. But not doing it, what is that harm? What is, what is harm? So is the, the harm so if, if it didn't happen, yeah. then there would essentially be two CSMs <clears throat> and the development would be split by two school districts, right? And that would be that. And the green part would be part of the, potentially part of the TIF and the gray part um, well, I'm, look, I'm looking. So I'm looking at my screen, which is different than what you've got. Yeah. But <clears throat> the gray part would be yeah. would be not part of the TIF. But you could we could still make improvements within the area because it's within one half mile of the boundaries of the TIF. Sure. But you wouldn't pick up the increment. That's but you wouldn't pick up the increment. The piece up. So it's like 30, 40 percent of the increment that you're losing. Go, well, it's not zero. It's a very low base today. There's no improvements. Yeah. So um, the, this is another, val like 84 South, um, there's some value to a site that has a very low base value. Mm -hmm. I mean, 84 South, when it started out, had a base value of around $7 million. A um, the last report that just came out, I think the total value of that 40-acre site is $215 million now. $17, 17 million. So it's um, the value of where 84 South is is $210,000 million more than it was before it started. And everyone is saying, well, it's not finished, it's not so, and we're working towards finishing the corner with, you saw the announcement for Cafe Hollander and yeah. the Feisty Loon, and then you, there's, I think there's activity with regard to the two other remaining sites that have a retail use and a potential coffee-related use, but I, I've learned long ago that you can't say that that stuff's coming until it actually comes because pandemics happen and all sorts of things happen. What if I even make this even cloudier? Why don't we just 
join the two, two school districts to be one district. I don't think that would work. And I think that would require some sort of legislative action or something. Because I think once the districts are set, they're set. So as I was told, West Dallas and New Berlin, um, there's, I don't remember it's the New Berlin district having something in West Dallas or West Dallas having something in New Berlin. West Dallas has New Berlin. A neighborhood yeah. in New so Berlin. So every year, yeah. apparently, there's a petition to try to get those few parcels. 124th and National. Corner. And every year they say, no, we're not doing it. There's also, Greenfield also has three school districts, including West Dallas, where we have seven to 13 parcels somewhere in the north. Uh, 104th corner. and by the new hospital. And school. those should be incorporated within Greenfield or Whitnow or something. Um, it would make everything a lot easier. So you're talking about tra trading I'm not talking about trading anything yet because I don't know yet. But potentially, but I, I, I would I, think I, that Widnall would not want to do anything unless they could trade for something else that provides some potential tax base to them in the future. They lose all They're not going to just base. want to give something away. Right. And, and so so we're looking at options for that. a piece of vacant land, what does that do for them? How it's not giving. It's to be built on that. Well, this is, a, really this is a, a piece of vacant land too, right? Well, so, right, right. Well, it's vacant land with great potential now. Now you're, and we're going to give them some other vacant land that doesn't have any. So the point is to try to piece of, find a piece of land that has great potential that potentially is owned by one party, right? right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe something like that exists somewhere. I, that's a tough one. Next on the border of Whitnall and. We're researching. Uh, uh, we're researching. It may not happen, but we hope it does. <laughs> There's no way to divide this up and do it in two different sections, like. Greenfield District. Then you'd have two TIFs is what you're potentially yeah. proposing. Yeah. So the, the point is that we're trying to combine it with the existing 84 South TIF because it's easier to amend a TIF as opposed to all of that other stuff. If you did what you were suggesting, create another TIF north of here, you would have to go through the entire process, which is expensive, right, to create the TIF, and you'd be basically doing it for four apartment buildings which wouldn't, okay. but it would be nice to capture that value of those four apartment buildings in the 84 South TIF. Right. So, got it. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, well, this was fun. I'm seriously, um, I'm just tired today. So. Can I make a motion to approve? Motion by the person, Kastner approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Braswell. I just, she, our other alternate arrived and I wanted to make sure that you could still vote. Mr. Is that the pe pecking order? In favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. You're taking Mr. Weiss's spot, right? Okay. I, I hope so, because I just. Yeah, he was here for us. That was an ineffective vote, and everything we just did has been. All right. Um, eight, in the ordinance to amend the official Greenfield zoning map by rezoning the property located at 4200 South 76th Street from C4 Regional Business District to PUD Planned Unit Development District PUD 4. I want to point, after you're done, I want to point something out. Okay. I think I may end up mentioning it as well. But uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is an application from Cobalt um, to rezone the property owned by Bricksmore. Just uh, disclosure, it is not Bricksmore that is applying for the application. Bricksmore had sent out, had issued... I'm probably not using the right term, but something like an RFP of we're looking for a developer to purchase the site, redevelop it. Um, they had, you know, certain criteria. They received, I believe, six responses and bricks more. The property owner. Can I interrupt you for a moment? Yes. Somebody approached me and said, in the paper, it said the city received six responses. What? I'm just. Just oh, the newspaper incorrectly said that. Well, then the, it was it? implied that somehow the six people that were trying to buy Spring Mall came to the city and the city picked Cobalt. That's not the case. No, it literally says here, Bricksmore received right, six responses someone, wanted, <laughs> and selected but Cobalt. I, I am <laughs> yes. clearing up a yep. minor controversy that yep. somehow the city picked Cobalt. It, the article referenced that the city said that there were six applicants. There were six applicants that we were aware of. Correct. There may have been more. There were just six that approached us to find out mm -hmm. about the site. That is correct. That clear. third last paragraph is fuzzy. In the staff report or in the newspaper article? Newspaper. Oh, okay. All right. 
So You're doing I didn't write the newspaper article. <laughs> uh, we're not blaming you. I'm just trying to make it clear that the city city had nothing to do with I the have determination been known to say of incorrect things. But. Who picked it from this RFP? Right. <laughs> that report's great. <laughs> so, Bricksmore received responses, and Bricksmore selected Cobalt as the potential future developer. So, Cobalt does have the property under contract. Um, Cobalt in their due diligence period is um, requested the rezone um, and so that is what we will be discussing this evening. Just uh, a very nice aerial of Spring Mall in its current condition. So here is our current zoning map. The pink equals C4 uh, which is one of our commercial districts and the proposal is to change this parcel within the black boundary to planned unit development. And then we always look at what does our comprehensive land use map say? Does the proposal and the application meet the comprehensive land use map? And yes, it does. The city identified this in 2020 um, to be a planned mixed use, future type of use, um, and any zoning should match that planned mixed use category and of course planned unit development does and cobalt is going to eventually their their thoughts is is a planned mixed developments combination of residential uses and commercial uses so matches the comprehensive land use plan perfectly and um so just some details about the draft ordinance uh which is specifically planned unit development district number four uh, what is listed here are uses that could go there. We're not saying these uses will go there. What the draft ordinance does is it lists uses that could go there if that ordinance is adopted by the Common Council. It could have general commercial retail uses, professional services, office, medical, uh, recreational entertainment uses, restaurants, and multifamily residential housing. So you'll see that there's nothing listed under special use. That means that, I mean, we saw restaurants this evening, the Korean barbecue, go through a special use permit. The beauty of planned unit developments is that they are drafted specifically for a parcel. And so what this states is that restaurants, if they were to go there, would not require a public hearing, an individual public hearing, because through this ordinance, the city's recognizing those would be permitted uses at this site only, okay? Um, just some other details, technicalities of the draft PUD. It, it's pretty consistent actually with uh, the Loomis and Layton planned unit development district, how that ordinance was drafted. We've got setbacks, we've got a maximum gross density of 21 units per acre. In comparison, Forte and Cobalt's current development at Loomis and Layton are roughly 40 units per acre. So this is a lot less dense, okay? Um, just some things I want to point out in the draft and the staff report, the minimum side yard I had put um, along the north property line, but after the, a little more thought into this and speaking with Cobalt, there will probably be multiple parcels within this. They'll have some CSMs in the future. So uh, there are going to be side yards and front yards all kind of mixed. What's the side? What's the front? So I just clarified that n a minimum side yard when it's along that north utility corridor, the power line to be zero feet. I mean, that's a huge gap that, and so we're recommending that there be a zero foot setback just along that north utility corridor. And then also Cobalt's architect um, just noted that the language of three quarters, the height of the tallest building or 20 feet, whichever is greater, they may run into some problems with townhomes and their proximity to each other, not that three quarters the height of the tallest building could end up requiring a really big gap, a really big distance between them. So they asked that we just say the 20 feet period, not have that, that three quarters is just a carryover from our standard PUD language. Um, so just to clarify on two little modifications there. So a public hearing would be required for the rezoning, um, could be scheduled as early as October 18th. One caveat that I do want to mention is this ordinance is drafted, would be drafted with a contingency that the rezoning would only be effective if Cobalt closes, purchases the property within 90 to 100 days from that Common Council public hearing, okay? So if the deal falls through um, and 
it's beyond that 120 days, this rezone would just basically be null and void. Okay, we don't wanna rezone a parcel specifically for development that we have in mind, but then that development never happens because that rezone took place and Joe Blow could develop who knows what. So, um, so that uh, contingency, and I did speak with the city attorney, he said that that language, we, could, we can definitely put that in the ordinance. Um, that 90 days, 120 days, I suppose, whatever the common council is comfortable with um, for that contingency. Uh, so this is, again, just the current aerial of the site and the um, boundaries that Cobalt has under contract. And then I actually am going to turn this over to Cobalt. This is a conceptual site plan. That um, Oh, I also want to mention that Cobalt already has had a neighborhood meeting with the residents to the east. We had it at Myers in August. Yes, in August. Um, and so that's why a lot of the people here in the audience are some of the neighbors. Um, they've been, Cobalt's done a really good job of keeping them in communication of what's going on, has, has email addresses for the property owners, and it's the same distribution that we, the city, will end up sending out for publication, for the notification of the public hearing. So that's the same list of addresses Cobalt notified of the neighborhood meeting. So, um, so I'll turn this over to Scott, who can, oh, oh sorry. Um, just one, and I <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Just because the letter was addressed to me, I want to make sure that we're very clear about this. So I'm sort of a lawyer, and the letter that we received from Bricksmore mm -hmm. yesterday by certified copy and certified mail and all this stuff um, was pretty, in essence, they said, you know, we're, it's not, we don't want to change the zoning. We don't support any of this, right? It's our property. You can't do this, right? Um, I just want to read my response. Um, the, the, the letter is here. You can see it all. The things that she talked about, about the zoning has to survive. You're Bricksmore? Yes. Are you Bricksmore? Yeah. yeah. Why don't, we, why don't you yeah. we'll let you go first? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Go ahead. Yeah. Lauren Sorry. Robinson here with Bricksmore. Um, obviously, we had to do that from a legal perspective, but very happy to see that the ordinance will be drafted to state that the zoning only is effective um, when and if um, cobalt closes. We're not opposed to the zoning. We just wanted to uh, make it clear that we did not authorize the application, um, and while we do support it, we don't want the property be, to be rezoned if the deal falls through. And we have the same interests that, that you do, Right. We don't want the zoning to change. Right. The development that's being proposed isn't going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So not to be, beat a dead horse, from, but... From your perspective, you probably would because it makes this site more valuable. Potentially. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So from my perspective, you are authorizing them to get the zoning changed with our perspective that so we're putting it... So long as it's not a, it's not binding until they close. Okay. So. So you are allowing us to do I mean, what do, do we that. do? We need to sign something. We didn't sign the application, so. Okay. And we haven't seen the draft of the ordinance either, so it's kind of hard for me to say I'm okay with it when I haven't viewed the language. But in theory, yes. Yeah, I know the letter. The letter was emailed late yesterday, so. And then hand delivered this morning or something crazy. Do you want me to pull up my copy of your response? So this is what I responded to you, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here, okay? Um, it was at 11:30 last night. Mm -hmm. I have received your correspondence, and that, as a lawyer, that's like a $2,500 letter right there. That's a good letter. Right? I haven't seen the, the invoice yet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what attorneys do. They attorney. I mean. I reiterate that everything is twice as important as it was the last time you said it. I looked up one. I had to look up one of the words, too. It's, you know. it, was a, it was a very impressive letter. I didn't draft it, but thanks. Tell the guy that was really good. Okay. <laughs> it's a guy. It's a guy. Well, Rich is actually the signatory. It was our attorney. His name is Chuck. Chuck. Just if you want to. Yeah. I mean. Sounds like a country band. 
You guys keep it lively. Okay, so we understand that Cobalt's request to change its zoning on the Springwell property, specific to Cobalt's proposed development, is defined by the PUD's zoning designation requested. We also understand that Bricksmore is not requesting this change in zoning, and that Bricksmore would not support a change in zoning unless and until Cobalt closes on the purchase of the property. The requested PUD zoning designation is in many ways tied to the scope and character of the development itself. The city would be adverse to the survivability of any change in zoning that wasn't tied to conceptually delineated development by the developer requesting it. Yes. So, in some ways, both Bricksmore and the city want the same thing. We both don't want any zoning change to survive a failed purchase. Right. Of course, the purchase could fail if the planning commission doesn't recommend and the common council doesn't approve after a public hearing the zoning change. Correct. Just so we're all on the same page. So when will we see a draft of the ordinance? So you will see a draft when it gets noticed for a public hearing. Okay. Because the public hearing has to specifically reference the change in zoning that's being requested. She has the draft there, which is for purposes, I think, of discussion tonight and recommending approval of the draft of what that zoning change would look like. So if we recommend approval tonight, it goes to a public hearing with that recommended language, draft language. Right. The PUD zoning. Okay. So what she was just going over. Right. Yep. Basically what a PUD zoning. Awesome. Okay. So we will get it. I just want to make sure that the city, too, is not trying to pull one over on Bricksmore or anything. Yeah. I think we're all aligned. So we're not here to jam up the process at all. So, all right. Thank you. That was fun. We're aligned as well. If it doesn't close, I guess we don't care. If it does, we do, and it will all be effective, assuming that that's the will of the plan commission and the council. But just to talk a little bit about the plan, because as the mayor mentioned, that's something that's kind of part and parcel of the approval of the draft PUD. So we did have a meeting, as Christy pointed out, with the neighbors. I see some of them are here tonight, and certainly if there's questions, we can address them, if that's fine with the commission. We made a series of changes. In fact, it's a totally different design, based in large part on comments from the meeting. So one of the questions that came up or concerns that came up, probably the largest one, and Christy was at the meeting as well, as was Jeff Katz, that the setback from the neighborhood to the east. So right now that represents between 100 and 150 feet of width and setback from what we had before, which was probably close to 50 feet. There was also concern about circulation. In the previous iteration was behind those townhouse buildings you can see there. Those groups of buildings to your right are two-story townhouse-style buildings with their own garages, drive-up garages, and so forth. The east side of those was an alleyway before, and there was concerns about trash collection and so forth there. So now that is basically a front door to those buildings with the garages to the interior, so it keeps it away from the neighborhood. Also along the neighborhood, well, that says stormwater. That entire area isn't necessarily stormwater pond. That's just where stormwater would be located. We also show a fence or committed to creating a fence as well as a tall fence and trees and landscaping along that eastern boundary. Some of the other things we did is created sort of more green corridors through the developments that are kind of running north to south. You'll see between those townhouses, Christy's pointed that out, and it terminates with a clubhouse, which is kind of set in the interior of the buildings at the bottom. The two buildings at the bottom are four-story, more traditional multifamily with parking beneath it, and the parking runs beneath some of the other paved areas, so we get to the parking ratios we need on a four-story building, which is a little more challenging typically than on a three-story building. So we think that's a big improvement over before with the pool and clubhouse kind of to the interior, but kind of in this visual terminus from that green space that runs from north to south from the power line trail. And then we really like how the other more commercial uses got set up along the, what's kind of the northwest area. You know, we front on 76th Street, so we took advantage of that as we move to the west along the site. But we also wanted to connect into that power line trail with some green space. So you'll see 
Um, we retained Myers there, which is you know an institution we think in the area they'd like to stay. We'd like to make that happen. Um, we also they'd like some additional banquet space. They'd like an event space. So we're working with that, and we got to work through all the economics yet on that. I mean, that's a tall order to make all that work. It's always a struggle, but um, we'll work through it. So again, this is a concept plan. There's there's more work to do on it for sure. Um, they've also run uh, the um, Papa Luigi's restaurant, uh, pizza restaurant, and um, are very interested in bringing one of those here. So we've laid one out. Again, we got to work through all that. It's preliminary, but that's the building to the south. Um, we've built those with outdoor areas with parking that can support um, the right ratios to have event space, banquet space. Myers, you know, gets busy, as does Papa Luigi's. Um, we tried to cent center those around um, a green space to the north. There's also a small building you see up there that would be kind of an outdoor, maybe a tap room and, and community space that could be used for different, you know, outdoor events on the green space. Um, it'd be nice to be able to bring some food trucks in, which is part of the intention. If we could do that, maybe, you know, one or two nights a week uh, on the green space. And then in the upper left, we do we do show there there is a house there, and the, the site plan um, shows some parking there. That's we are not under contract with that. It's not needed for parking, but if that changed over time, you know, there could be parking there, and it could serve as a nice trailhead um, to the Powerline Trail. We thought it'd be nice to designate a parking area within here as as kind of a trailhead, as a place to bring people in to get on the trail. So when they come back, you know, they might finish off at a restaurant. Um, on the site and on some of the green space. So in total, we've got 367 units. I think 146 or 148 are townhouses. That's a bigger percentage than we had in the prior plan. Um, so we like how this works out. It sets up with a little less density. I think it's more respectful to the neighborhood to the east. We definitely improved the setback, took away some of the alley, and, and uh, that was a concern along that east. And I think we transition nice as we get to 76th Street with some of the commercial uses. So. That's the concept. Again, it's still a concept, um, but but it's um, we're pleased with how it's coming together. We think it kind of hits the right um, you know elements of what's in the marketplace. You'll see the way the circulation, the points of access are still in the same locations. So from a traffic perspective, you know, being that this was a prior mall um, and the points of ingress and egress are the same, we don't really think there's any offsite modifications that are needed from a traffic perspective. Um, the flow through there still works pretty nice. We have a main entrance that comes in off of 76 that has a bit of a, a Y kind of a roundabout there with um, some element, architectural element that would block headlights from shining to those um, units, um, but also creates a nice landscape feature um, and a kind of activated plaza. There's a, not only on the green space to the north, but to the south of that Myers event space, there's an outdoor area for part of the event programming as well. So. Glad to answer any questions. Just to be clear, the stormwater isn't like Lake Huron there. No, that, I mentioned that. I think you were you were doing something other, but that that that's the area for the stormwater. That's bigger than would be needed for sure. I mean, that's that area isn't all a pond. That's just the area where stormwater would be placed. But that's a that's a big area right now. That's a couple acres. And really, it's intended to be the setback to the neighborhood. So then, what would be there? I well, there will be some stormwater for sure in green sure. space. Yeah, yeah. We just we haven't sized what that pond would be. Have you made contact with uh, uh, a power line? Uh, we Energies. I don't know who owns that one. ATC uh, for potential parking if needed on. The yeah, we're we're, we're in the pro we're looking at whether we could do that. I think that's a good suggestion if we could do some element of overflow parking potentially. I mean, that was the reason for the request to you know Christy for the zero setback up there. There's no reason to have a setback up there no, when no. you've got all that green space. So, um, yeah, those are all things we're looking at. They've done some of that in the past, um, and they're they, they're amenable generally. I mean, they're you know they're yes. bureaucratic, but they're willing to work with us on some of that. It's kind of similar to the what festival donated. Fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, ten, fifteen, twenty grand at sixtieth or sixty eighth on the power line trail for a seating area and a bike area. Right? That's not really what I was talking about, but no, yeah. But that is good too. But that was in the We Energy's on their way. property, yeah. Yeah, I mean we like to find ways. I mean it's it's an amenity, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean we'd hope it's you go up to um like you said, Thienesville, Mequon area where the trail is by some of that development there. And there's, mm -hmm. there's some activity is associated with it. Yeah. So no, uh, we had a bad the one thing. by the church on yeah. 100th Street. Mm -hmm. And actually that uh, in West Dallas, the auto club has one. Really? Yeah, cross easement. They're very amenable.
yep. easy to work right. with. Yeah. So we, I mean, we like this plan. It'll, it'll, you know, evolve further as as we go. But it it parks well. It uh, I think it lays out well. I think it respects, like I said, the densities does, and the neighborhood. Does the Powerland Trail make the site more attractive sure. for redevelopment? Oh, I think so. I mean, you know, it's not going to drive some use that'll be there, but I think it it's uh, if people are outside, you know, in the beer garden and, and that area, I think it's a nice kind of, it creates some activity versus just an easement with power lines there, for sure. And I think you'll have people that'll stop here, and if we can make this a bit of a trailhead location where people can park it on the trail, I think that's a good thing. <coughs> So any questions, we're glad to answer. Again, we're not really here for the site plan. This is really context for, for the, the language and it's the basis for the language in the PUD. We get asked a lot when this shows up because the, you know, the media picks it up and they've in the past reported yeah, they're gonna do 500 units and they're gonna do 300,000 square feet and it's not the maximum. So those are kind of bookends. A lot of this mixed use development you know, you need the flexibility built in, so we set kind of parameters, but those, you couldn't build them all, they wouldn't all fit. So, you know, the language in the PUD has upper limits to those types of uses, but we don't, you know, we, we end up somewhere in between on those uses. Um, I know there's some people here from the neighborhood. I don't know if you, it's not a public hearing, but I mean, if, if you want us to answer any questions, we're glad to do that. But this looks different than what you propose at your neighborhood meeting. It does. Dramatically yeah. different. Uh, Currently listening to the neighborhoods. Yeah, we. I mean, we. I think we incorporated all except someone who said just make it all green space. But other than that, we. I think we've incorporated the the comments that came up there. Um, and I know Christy was there. I don't know if you feel that way or not. But certainly, we we took the setback. We took away that alley. I think those were the primary <coughs> concerns. You know, fence and and really the concerns were about you know how it interacts with the neighborhood to the east. And I think we've changed that significantly. Other questions I can answer? Scott. Yes, sir. When you did 84 South, uh, what fiduciary, you originally proposed a four-story building. No, um, we no, we originally proposed a three-story building. Yeah. And then we, just, we looked at doing a four-story building, and the cost-benefit of adding the fourth floor along with the underground parking would have created like a plaza which made it cost prohibitive to put the four-story building in. Yeah. Just so you know, that's what Wouldn't happened. the same thing happen here, maybe? Well, I mean, it's, it's so there's trade-offs, right? The, you, you gain more density, so you get more increment, but it's more costly. When you put the, you know, podium style, when you've got building on top of a terrace, it's more expensive. Um, so it's always cost-benefit, right? I mean, you end up lower density, you know, is typically less expensive to build, but you don't get the increment, so you got to strike a balance. It could, I mean, and those could become three stories. We'd lose some units, we'd lose some increments. So, I mean, that becomes the next step in the analysis. But right now we're proposing four, it gets us to, to those unit counts. I mean, if, if the decision later is made that they're three story, we can do that and it parks more readily because you get, you know, at a three story building, you can get a one to one ratio per unit where there's parking inside, which is desirable and really the goal. Um, when you go to four stories, you can't do that under the footprint of the building. So you end up having to, have the parking up, you know, beyond some of the footprints. So some of those buildings, some of the space outside has parking underneath it. But we don't know the answer yet. So like I, the- in, in hindsight, I, I, looking at the 84 South, I would have preferred the four story building. And I think the market, uh, Could not have knowing at it. the time was kind yeah. of scary. Yeah. But I think in hindsight, yeah. you would have probably have to agree that it would, would have made sense. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a TIF request at the time from fiduciary and because they developed those buildings. And I think the TIF, you know, went up significantly and it seemed disproportionately at the time for the increment that was created. So, I mean, that's an analysis we'd have to undertake again here. And, um, you know, we'll get to that point at some, at some point along the way. So just so everybody knows that 84 South, he didn't build the apartments fiduciary, another developer yeah, yeah, that yeah. developed apartments, developed that portion of it. And at that time, they came in at three stores and then they approached the city and said, well, we'll go to four stories. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but they come to us and say, we'll go to four stories, but we're gonna need all this much more money, right? And there's a cost benefit analysis, right? Between, okay, we're giving you so much more to add that fourth floor, 
so that you can. It was like more than double. It went up it like seven lot. million dollars or something. It was significant. And when we were when we were doing the initial analysis pro forma for eighty four South, the I mean the base was seven million, and the pro forma suggested that the total value of eighty four South was going to be one hundred seven to one hundred seventeen or something like that. One hundred seven. Yeah, and that was before Aurora came along. I mean, which helped create a lot of increment. And we there was a separate round of TIF with Aurora for the parking structure. Um, but we didn't, that was not, fiduciary was prior to all that. So we were early and I think the, I don't know if these were the right numbers, but it went from like 5 million of TIF to like 13 or something. It was a significant change and, and it just didn't seem to make sense, but it wasn't our decision. It was up to the city and, you know, the negotiations with the fiduciary. And shortly thereafter, Aurora did come along and Aurora approached, said, you know, we would need more parking and we'd need a parking structure. And it seemed that money was better spent on the parking structure because they were a building per square foot yeah. is worth so much more. Right? Well, and the difference would have been that, that parking structure, which sits on you know less than an acre, probably around an acre, it would have been four and a half acres of undeveloped land. So we've created, I mean, the, the, the base right now, like you said, is the increment is about 207, 205 or 207 million, um, which is, you know, over, it's like four and a half million an acre of development. So putting the parking structure on, you know, an acre versus four and a half acres made sense at the time and in hindsight does so even more. So, but we probably diverged from the site plan here. So, um, any other questions I can answer? I like four stories. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, um, it fits. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it'll just, you know, it'll get more expensive and it creates that this plaza condition, sense. but it's also, you also gain a little bit, you can gain some efficiencies when that parking footprint's a little larger too on circulation depending on the configuration, so. Do the buildings connect underground? Uh, they do. I mean, the parking does. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, correct, right. So parking essentially would be under that hole, those two buildings. Yeah, I don't think it's all of it. I don't know, Dan may know. I don't, do you know, I mean, Dan? The, it, right, uh, I'm it, it's, it connects between the buildings and, and sure. um, okay. I don't know that it's all of it and how it relates to the clubhouse, but I mean, we have that. I just don't recall standing here what exactly. It's very much like the Ogden building at. Yeah, it's similar with the with that right. interior. Yeah, but it also what's nice is it serves for that, but it also provides. It's also kind of amortized across the townhouses, so it's an amenity for those townhouses too. Mm. And it lays out, I think, really well with, like I said, that it's down that kind of a terminus point, so creates a nice, I think that'll be really attractive. And that's, even that area, green space between those buildings is probably um, 50 feet. So there's a pretty good open space there. That's pretty good. Is Joseph Company uh, gonna have a piece of the action? Uh, possibly, I mean, we're, we're in discussions and certainly um, really enjoy working with them. They build great product and we have a you know, strong working relationship. So, um, you know, we tend to be, more out in the front of kind of the acquisition and working through all the other stuff. And then, uh, so we're, we had a meeting with them tomorrow, in fact. So potential, yes. Other questions? All right, thank you. Motion for approval. I might have to find my. Is it my turn to talk a little bit? I, this isn't a public hearing, but I would certainly, as chair, allow you to. Sure, absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll, I won't talk to the microphone then. No, you need to talk uh, to, yeah, no, you need to, to, talk to the talk, microphone. Talk okay. in the microphone. Uh, I live in Greenfield, live right by Bob over there. Uh, I think that's a lot of people in a very small area. I hope you're looking at the schools and the traffic and all the other things. I know the millions of dollars are really attractive. Uh, if I was a person living in those other homes, I wouldn't really be happy with the the stormwater area there and four story buildings. Uh, there's a lot of two story, four families up and down 76th Street. I walk by there all the time. Uh, don't really have a problem with people and apartments and whatever, but you're, you're kind of, my concern is that you're kind of building an opportunity for people to really be jammed in. Uh, more people, more density, a lot of cars, a lot of traffic. I know there used to be stores there and there was traffic and the parking lot was pretty full, but you don't have as much parking. You got a lot of people living there. Uh, I just think it's too much. Can I ask you something? Sure, sure. So if it was a Woodman's, there, because there's always been this rumor that it's going to be a Woodman's. A Woodman's? Right? I had heard you looking to put a Woodman's in there. Yeah. yeah. So what would generate more traffic? A Woodman's that does about $157 million a year in sales per store. Okay. 
Residential. Or an apartment building that has 275 units or 375 units. 375, yeah. Um, I'm not as concerned about the, it's not the traffic going in there, it's the people that are living there that are coming and going, that are, when they're there, they're going across the street to pick and save. They're not just going there and staying in their house or in their apartment. They're coming and going. They're going to Woodman's too. So they're buying groceries. They're coming. They're going. I'm just looking at, uh, you're going to be putting a lot of people in schools. I hope the school's got enough room for I, it. Just so everyone knows, I, I met with the school superintendent today and talked about this development and a couple of the other developments and, and sharing properties and doing all that stuff. Um, so we do think about those kinds of things. Okay, well, and, I'm, the, and the person mix. Just and so I'm not. Know. I'm not saying I'm the only guy that can come up with that one. But a fire department, police, uh, you know, everything else. I heard uh, talking about building uh, 300 units at Southridge. Um, we're bringing a lot of people in the neighborhood. We need to be sure we bring in all all of the services that we have that we're used to having. Uh, we're, you know, they're going to be coming and going. They're not going to just go in their place and stay there. Uh, Yes, uh, Woodman's would bring in a lot of traffic. A uh, lot of traffic. You know, a lot of traffic, but we had a pick and save over there before. We and still now do have a pick and save. We have a, so did, did you know why this building was vacant for 10, year, 10 years? They moved across the street. I mean, pick and save moved Pick and save continued to lease the building because they didn't want any competition. Okay. So, and, and here's, another, here's another interesting tidbit. Of all the pick and saves that are in the state of Wisconsin, the pick and save on 76 and Cold Spring is the busiest one. Has the highest sales. That's how I got to be 250 pounds. Are you so, really 250 pounds? You don't look it. Pardon? <laughs> you don't look it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, my point is that that's a lot of stuff to move into a neighborhood that didn't have a lot of kids, a lot of people, a lot of uh, more people. You're bringing a lot of people into Greenfield, and I love Greenfield. I'm not against having more people in Greenfield, but you're building a lot of apartment buildings. Um, I've been there for 40 years. I've been living across the street for Bob pretty happily most of that time. So, uh, Most of the time. Yeah, I'm just saying that that's a lot of people in four-story buildings. I don't see a lot of four-story buildings in Greenfield. Um, if you were putting in two-story buildings, maybe a little green space between them, I'd, I'd, vote, I'd vote yes if I had a vote. The last thing is I walked down that corridor, and there's a couple of places where apartment buildings are pretty much look like they're right up to the property line. There's a little bit of room to drive a car behind there. That's where all the junk goes. All that's, the, that's on the Milwaukee side mostly, isn't it? On the, you're talking the pathway, right? You're gonna get better people here than you do in Milwaukee. I don't know. We tend we got to, you. We tend. We got you. I mean, so that's well. We have your <laughs> wife. We should say. <laughs> and she is. She is. She is the best thing about me. You know. So, yeah. uh, but I'm just saying, a little more space between that, uh, so that somebody cuts the grass, somebody takes care of the bushes, and that's not becoming the junkyard back there. A lot of apartments, I see that's the junkyard, just, and the owner doesn't care because nobody sees it except those of us using the path. Just so you understand, too, that historically, We Energies or ATC was responsible for cutting all of the right-of-way. The city is now responsible for cutting the right-of-way, and it will be cut on a, on a, a timely basis. So okay. there, there are points when the, the right-of-way was in... It was basically ignored by ATC. And it was pretty energies. wild. So right. we, we viewed this as an opportunity to sure. exercise some sort uh, of jurisdictional uh, you know, control over what it looks like back there to okay. try to clean up our boundary along. In as much as it was all grant funded, we are investing a lot in that right away into the neighborhood. Absolutely. So I, I like the, you know, the, the, the public space. I don't know how much public that's going to get used, but I, we like to go to the park and listen to the music on, in Conkle Park. I think that's great. I don't know if you have enough space for that there because that gets pretty busy. So this, as I understand it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is mostly designed as outdoor event space for potentially a Myers restaurant. Right. So potentially for a wedding or like for food trucks or something, uh, yeah, yeah. right? So uh, I, it's a lot of space. I, if, if, if I it's, was, it's not like Conco Park. If I, if I was in charge of the space, I'd want it to be used somewhat more for public space. And I want to see smaller apartments, less people, I guess. Uh, and shorter buildings. I like the two-story, four families that are up and down 76th Street. Uh, it kind of brings a lot of people in, but they're coming and going. Uh, now you've got four, four stories. Um, that's a lot of people in a very small area. So, only two of them are four stories. You know that, right? The the only the two are along. The other all just two stories. Okay. They're, they're are they, I like the, I like the they, duplex, the side-by-side -side thing. Are they flat roofs? The, the, uh, two the, no, the four. Yes. 
So that prospectively seems a lot shorter. I mean, I the one on Layton, the building seems a little shorter, but it's it's three still and it's it's still four stories. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, in townhouses, you're, you're going to get a, what, family, right? You're not going to get, like, I don't know, 10 people in a, you know, a townhouse, right? It's just going to be, like, one family, so you figure. But I guess it's, like, 500 people could be winding up living in that space, right? Mm -hmm. Should be yeah. Than that. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's compared to that's nobody big. living there. That's a big space. So I'm not against... No, I'm not moving mad. forward. I, I think you're moving too your time, far. Uh, that's my that's my point. Is you're putting too many people in such in that space. I like Meyer's restaurant. I go there a lot. Again, you know more than I should. Uh, but 25. I'm just saying, too many people, too small a space. Um, I hope this, you know, the schools, the garbage, police, fire, uh, emergency personnel. Not that there's going to be any more there than there is in my neighborhood, but. Uh, we're putting a lot, of, a lot of people in Greenfield. We need to be sure we don't uh, compromise on our services. No, and I trust as me. I get older, I might be needing that rescue squad. So, all right. Excuse me, can Point we please have your name and address in the microphone oh, for a minute? My name is John Shesky, S-Z-C-Z-E-W-S-K-I. Would have never gotten that right. And I live at 4236 South 82nd Street. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Hey, Scott, I got a quick question. So then the units, do you have a unit price ballpark? I think people probably. Rental cost. Yeah, rental cost or whatever to, I know you're probably, is it? More than it's market. Grand? It's market rate. It's going to be market rate, right, at least. This so isn't what? subsidized. This isn't any of that. Yeah. Section 42, senior stuff. This is all market <laughs> rate. Rate. <laughs> High-income people going to our restaurants, eating. Our Scott, food, I have a question busy. also on the uh, apartments, not the townhouses. Uh, based on your experience, how many uh, would be occupied by families or people with school kids? Oh boy, I don't know. Not would, that many. I would, I would what think we're right? You know, if you look at Forte, and mm -hmm. we don't have all the data there, but there aren't that many. There's a lot of. Um, there's some empty nesters, and there's a lot of, you know, I think uh, millennials and that, that don't have families yet. Right. Um, I think it'd be a mix, but I think in that the four-story product less. I think more so in the townhouse building. Right. But so I don't know if I could less kids than the townhouses. Correct. You would think, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. That mm -hmm. I'd say. I just I can't give you. A the four-story would be the young professionals that want to still live in Greenfield, close right. to their parents and their grandparents. Right. More or urban the one style that living still. The right. so. Right. Vehemently endorsed. And it's going to be all rentals, or is it going to be yes. I, exactly the same reason? We want our youth to be able to stay in our city, not only. Yeah, well, I mean, it brings that's the intention, right? Country. It's it's mm -hmm. more that product type. Well, they took away their their. And then also, ball, as far course, as uh, traffic, I live in an 86 unit uh, condo complex, and you don't have people coming and going, and you know they come sporadically or whatever. Yeah, it's different. I think you'd find the same thing here that yeah. it wouldn't add to the traffic on the street that much. No, I mean we we think again from a traffic perspective, and I mean we have to have traffic studies done by qualified traffic engineers. That uh, we're, we're confident to tell you that the traffic generation will be a lot less than it would be as a mall or other types of uses. Definitely, yeah. Um, and it it's the you know the least amount of traffic coming and going at one time of most types of uses. Right, you don't have a company where there's a shift starting and ending and so forth. So um, mm -hmm. people have different schedules. People work remotely. It's a lot different these days for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not going to be like the Starbucks. The late the right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Just a couple of things. Just one, I'm sorry, one more question for you. Um, so He's not at the, sorry. At the, the neighborhood meeting and afterwards, I'd received some emails from some <clears throat> folks that lived in the neighborhood to the east with regard to the replacement of the fence. Yes, we are planning to replace that. The in, probably the entire thing along yes. the entire property the fence, line. which they wanted tall, eight feet, and landscaping, and uh, that's all part of the plan. And that would probably fit in that area where the s s stormwater is delineated here. Correct. That would just Correct. run up to the line where the uh, walking path is. I mean, that's not going to go around. You're not. Are you, you're not building a. No, no, right. Way. It would only run along that um, that eastern East. boundary. 
the, I mean, maybe it wraps up, you know, a couple feet if if that's sure. the desire of the neighborhood. We'll work with them. Sure. Yeah, and it's nice maybe not just to end in space, but to have a bit of a return, but um, not beyond that. How comfortable you, I understand that you, there's still a lot of economics to work out. How comfortable do you feel that this is relatively close to the project that you'd want to do at the site? Very close. I was just telling Dan, as I said, that we really like this plan. I mean, I think the biggest issue is, you know, we work through economics, right? That's always the challenge. But that issue aside, the, the actual plan, we, I don't think we change much. I really don't. I think it's a great plan. It's a good mixed use. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, like one other question. Sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, every we'll unit of a development is worth a certain, is, is, I understand some are one bedroom, some are three bedrooms, some are studios, some are two bedrooms. They're, right. they're roughly worth about $200,000 a unit in taxable. Well, on a, on a tax, you know, I mean. $150,000? Sure. I mean, we're seeing numbers right now, you know, Not construction approaching in, a, in an excess of 300000 per unit on construction, all in. But I mean, as all far in. as taxable value goes. Yeah, I mean, it varies by community and how they're keeping up with assessments, right? But, um, you know, we've typically modeled things here in Greenfield at, you know, the 160-ish range when we talk about increment. I mean, here you've got, you know... You're always conservative on that, though. Yeah, I mean... Because you're taxed on it, right? Well, that isn't the reason. I mean, because the TIF models, I mean, most of these have been public-private TIF projects, and we don't want to... We'd rather not disappoint, not achieve, you know, the goal. Um, so if we do better, we do better. Um, which, you know, we certainly did at 84 South. We've done it out at our project in Menominee Falls. We're well above what we projected. Um, but if you look, I mean, I've looked at some of the assessments on similar products, and they're not probably at that level right now. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Did you want to speak? No, I'm going to wait. Thank you. Okay, so we're still in eight. I'd enter. I do have a motion, Carl, oh, from Carl. Okay. There was a motion. Does is the motion contain all the contingencies that were discussed with Bricksmore? Uh, I, I, yes, it would. It so, should, I Carl. Mean, in, in, a, in essence, the, <laughs> I, I, the idea is consistent um, with the email response that I gave to Bricksmore, which I think Bricksmore, the representative is here and is in concert it with? It most definitely is. I, I presume it to be standard operating procedure from our, our standpoint, but I will include that into the motion. And the seconder agrees. The seconder okay. agrees. And do you want to put it back up quickly just so we know? Just can you go back to what the, the zone? That's basically it, right? Yeah. Okay. And that. Right. Okay. okay. The motion was made and seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, item nine is community development. No, I'm just. Support. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going. My finger doesn't seem to. Have any touch? I doesn't. Just okay. read number that nine. Community right development there. manager report. Sorry. I think we covered a lot of the big projects I've been spending a lot of my time on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so just so the nothing coming. Oh, well, I mean, be we're, stuff coming. we're amending TIF six that was discussed. Yep. That is going to be a big project over the next two months. Um, Plan commission will see it once but lots of committee meetings involved with that um okay. all right all good mm -hmm. is, um, just one other thing with regard to the power line trail i may have been saying that next year the other part of power line from 60th to 35th rush roughly the park over there it's not next year it's the year after that's when the grant money arrives so there will be a delay in the continuation of the trail for a year until we get our in receipt of the other grant dollars from 60th to um, the park. My understanding, the Milwaukee is actually working on the next phase too. So I've been approached by um, folks in Milwaukee about continuing the power line trail beyond 35th and 27th all the way to the lakefront. So the goal is oh, wow. to have the power line trail connect to the lakefront. Mm -hmm. And it sounds That's like cool. 
<laughs> you could take the Oakley or the Aaron, Hank Aaron back yeah, there. So that's ne it. Okay. Uh, next month, um, we'll see on the agenda, just the parking lot for the Lowlands project for Cafe Hollander, because Lowlands is still working out details and actually getting a lot of um, the economics figures worked out um, for the architecture. But if we review the site plan, they can get going on the groundwork this year before the frost. So it, it's a little piecemeal, but so I think that that's okay. Site landscaping plan, you want to see what the building looks like but they want to get moving on the parking lot. The, the footprint of the building is, um, is going to be subject to review, of course. But, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that well, it? Any of that is always I'd welcome. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn at uh, 7.32 by Alder, or Commissioner that. Carlson, yeah. second by Zach. Commissioner Marshall. Commissioner Marshall. All in favor? Aye. All right. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. All right. you know, it's I, been uh, a pleasure, gentlemen. I uh, fractured my ankle serving the park and rec. I was cleaning up park, uh, Cooper's Hot guys. Park. Yeah. And I cleaned, yeah, I cleaned up around the.